One thing I'm going to recommend uh, definitely is the people who have not read the Bible before, and especially uh, those who claim to be Christian who uh, will quote out of it, but very seldom do I find that they've read the entire book. Um, I'm recommending them to actually take the time to read it so that at least they can verify their faith because it would be like uh, saying you're part of a nation with a charter and you've never read the charter. And, and I find that tends to be the problem. And it leads to the word assumption because a lot of the things that people are doing is just based on they assume something to be something. They have no verification of it. And then they continue to spiel the same misconceptions uh, out to people. So I, I titled this video, Assumption is the Mother of All Birth Misconceptions, because this has a lot to do with understanding what's happened in this document or what the parents filled out. The parents were just assuming that they had legal rights, which they don't. Um, therefore, there's really no proof they would have a legal right uh, because they're assuming to be something. They're adopting a belief that has nothing behind it. Um, and as we've done in previous videos, anything to do with the concept of legal and human um, is not something from God. And therefore, these are acquired rights through a legal system that can take them away because they're not absolute. They're conditional. So why people are so devastated by some of the videos I've done is because they will clamor out there, my rights are being violated. And it's because they've put so much time and energy into this legal system, registering property, registering treasures on earth. Um, they've been taken by a misconception um, they don't even realize that the money they've used, whether it be a fiat legal currency, um, it doesn't have their signature on it. It's not theirs. They're not a member of that institution that issues the money. And therefore, anything that they bought with it belongs to the institution that has that power. Um, and to be deceived at that stage to say, well, that just can't be. I've been stolen from or I've been robbed is a ridiculous concept because of the fact you didn't know <laughs> is really a part of the problem. And therefore, that's why God's people um, need to realize that if they want to perish with the rest of the world, it's going to be due to their lack of knowledge. So we're going, um, we're going a little bit in detail on this today because um, this whole system, this framework of society is based on you acting in assumption because you can't host this event without assuming something. And we know that saying that was you know, phrase he who assumes, we're not going to get into the full detail of it because it's not necessary, but I think you get the message there on what happens when you assume something. In uh, Black's Law 4th edition, uh, when you look up the word assume, it says to pretend, to undertake. Now you understand the word undertake. It's very interesting, that word, because we know what undertakers are and they deal with the dead. So you can imagine with all the law that's out there that we call legal, in confusion, thinking it has anything to do with God, the legal system of the pagans or the Romans, uh, the civil system, uh, is based on assumption. And so people walk into an assumption in this, and therefore they're dealing with the dead. They're undertaking the dead. And it also has the word engage, which is also a wager. Gage is wage. We have to get into these words because they, they all should have a lot to do with arms and, and war and conflict and engagement. Think about that. That's why when people generally are about to get married in the legal sense, in licentious behavior at the final end, they're actually joining two armed combatants together and they're engaged. So nothing that we've experienced in legal civil society has anything to do with um, adhering to God or good conscience or moral behavior, it has to do with following the concepts of men and paganism and the father of the lie, the father of the fiction, which is Satan. So when we go further uh, into, it says the word assume in blacks, it also has 
also taking up, receiving, adopting, taking to oneself, or to put on deceitfully. Now, is there any other way you could take on a fiction or a lie other than to put it on deceitfully? Isn't that a cover-up right in its concept right from the beginning? So it's an outward appearance, but it's not real. It's just a cover-up. It's an act. And it's pretend. And of course, you can't issue legal tender without a pretender that's going to be involved in the movement of this. So when we go into uh, the definition of assumption, it states the act of conceding or taking for granted. Remember that saying, don't be careful what you're taking something for granted. And it says also, it says the act or agreement of assuming or taking upon oneself the undertaking or adoption of a debt or obligation primarily resting upon another. Now remember the words in Proverbs, see you as surety for a stranger or another will surely smart for to be injured. So we in a civil system of participation have adopted a legal title and taken on the debt because surname is a debt or a debtor. I've gone through numerous videos on that. Don't make me have to go back to every quote on every uh, definition leading to that, but the uh, it is there and you will find it um, in these law dictionaries, but you'll also find it by researching through um, some very good uh, thick dictionaries that give you the understanding of the language. So uh, we know that even the Canadian Gage Dictionary plainly uh, defined a surname as a name added to one's real name. So it's not real. It's not the name your parents gave you. This is just something that they were deceived into thinking by assumption was their name. So they took on a surname and they assume it. It's not something that you've been gifted. It isn't free. It comes with duties, debts, and obligations. And it's there to work in legal commerce. It has nothing to do with spirituality. It's secularism, which is the opposite of anything to do with spiritual. We go into Noah Webster's 1828 um, further, and because we, we we're trying to get the understanding of how these words work. So assumption is the taking, the act of taking to oneself, the acting of taking for granted, or supposing a thing without proof supposition. So all that is going on with surnames are legal insinuations. Just as Adam and Eve, when they took from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it was very simple for God to see what they did because he knew in sin you ate Adam and Eve from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They took something that didn't belong to them and therefore they ate from something forbidden. So when you touch something that's forbidden, even though there are legalists that are bidding on you doing this because it's a game and a lottery, a game of chance in the court of chancery, that you won't know this. So tell the truth, a Christian would be forbidden from touching anything unclean in the legal world of the civil system of man's world. Because you didn't know doesn't mean you're not going to be penalized. And that's why people are running into so much problems going into the court because the court is already under the presumption because you're responding to the name that has been assigned for those who consent to take on the debt. But if you have woke up to truth, you will realize the worst thing you could do is walk voluntarily into that courtroom. If you're going to take the spiritual path, you're going to have to take the right path and there you'll be brought before them. Now you're there involuntarily and you can state that, that you're there involuntarily against your consent and that you are fully aware that a name, a legal name was assigned upon you at time of birth. And remember that without your consent because a child could never have consented. But if you've acted upon that name, they're going to proceed on that because they have no other way to go. Now, fraud is not fraud when you participate. So a fiction is not going to be recognized as a fiction 
when you energize that very legal title. So very key, a man of spirituality could, could be there at that moment if he's brought in without his consent, involuntarily, he can state the fact that he is there involuntarily without his consent as he's being forced to claim something that is false and that he will refuse to do that in good conscience and he's there to seek equity. And then you would have the ability at that moment to let them know that you do not consent to have your private God-given name or a God-given Christian name used for any commercial purposes in that courtroom. But you can't withdraw that or say that when you're walking in there on a voluntary basis. So the problem is the treadmill is already going ahead for most people that have sent me emails about what do you do if you're being called into court? Well, if, if that is not you and you know that's not you, well, then you're going to have to take a stance for what is right. And you have to stop it. But if you're taking benefits and privileges from it, and I can't, that, that's a matter of conscience. Um, and I'm just saying that we've been trained to, um, to feed off of something that wasn't right from the beginning, and you've got too used to it. So most people um, are needing to build knowledge and health, uh, build knowledge that they don't have to tap into that system for that reason. And then we're going to lead down the journey of what do you do? How do you tell them who you are? How are you going to declare who you are? And what relief do you have that would exempt you? So we're going to go to the next video that's dealing with the term exemption.